So it's a poets and pancakes um, about the author. Asoka Mitran was the author of it and was born in the year of 1931, a Tamil writer. So recounts his years at Gemini Studios in his book, My Years with Boss, which talks of the influence of movies on every aspect of life in India. So when you talk about man's, uh, the Gemini Studios, so uh, obviously it uh, gives us the idea that it locates in Chennai uh, and was uh, set up in 1940. So the Gemini Studios was one of the most influential film producing organizations of India. In the early days of Indian filmmaking, it, its founder was S.S. Varsan. So we were talking about the Gemini Studio. Its founder was S.S. Varsan. The duty of Asuk Mitran in Gemini Studios was to cut out newspaper clippings on a wide variety of subjects and store them in files. So that is what the job of Asoka Mitran. So uh, where he was working in Gemini Studios and what was his duty to cut out newspaper clippings on a wide variety of subjects means in different different uh, 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 different different subjects and also what he used to do now he stored them in flies many of these have to be written out by hand right although he performed an insignificant function so when you say that insignificant right there's something called as a means uh, uh, unimportant function, right? Significant means important and insignificant means something which is not that important function. He was the most well informed of all the members of the Gemini family. Now you can, uh, could find out how Asoka Mitran was uh, means, you know, got the popularity. So it is stated that although he performed an insignificant function, so means you would find out he was not that important. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he did not do such kind of a means important function. But at the same time, he was the most well informed, well aware of all the members of the Gemini family. It means he knew all the people of Gemini family. So this particular part is an excerpt from his book, which is called as a My Years with Boss, right? Now, let's go to the kind of this uh, lesson, actually. If I give you a kind of a uh, idea on this particular topic, right? So, which is uh, taken as an excerpt. So, what you will find out in this uh, lesson? So, we find out that Asoka Mitran in this particular lesson talks about Gemini Studios, right? And all that helps in keeping in the spotlight. He starts by making a, you know, spotlight. What is the job of the spotlight? So, or spot boy. So, how does he helps in keeping in the spotlight? or he got into the kind of a fame. He starts by making a mention about pancakes, right? So the famous makeup brand. So what is that uh, pancakes? The famous makeup brand, which Gemini Studios ordered in truckloads, right? So, he then talks about the move, the movement of actors and actress who have to, you know, bear too many lights on their face while getting ready in the makeup room. So generally what happened, artists, right, actors and actress. So these people when, when performed any kind of a role, so where they found, so means they spent a lot of time in the makeup room, right? So the makeup department, according to 
uh, means Asoka Mitran that used gathers up or heaps up, heaps of piles, right? Gathering up makeup to turn them into ugly looking creatures, right? Shockingly, right? Uh, he talks about the office boy to, you know, he talks about the office boy of the makeup department, whose task is what? To slap paint. Slap paint onto the face of players at the time of crowd shooting. Now, generally, who does such kind of a makeup? This means uh, artist, right? Means uh, This artist means I'm talking about the uh, makeup boy or makeup girl. So, and making the beautiful uh, woman into the ugly looking creature at this by putting artificial means, you know, artificial uh, who or color onto their face and different, different creams. So, he talks about the office boy of the makeup department whose task is nothing but slap paint onto the face of, uh, onto the faces of players. At the time of crowd shooting. So, Asoka Mitran was a poet and had joined the studio in the hope of becoming an actor, right? Or you can say that screenwriter or director or a lyricist. So, like having lots of aims into the mind. So, he joined the studio that's called the Gemini studio. In those days, the author used to work, uh, you can say that inside a cubicle and had the task of what? Collecting newspaper, cuttings, which uh, according to other words, somehow called as a, not that important like we read in the uh, introduction part of the man's author. Therefore, office boy would come in time again to bother him with his complaints, right? So, uh, he was even well convinced that the reason behind his sadness was nothing but one of the character called Subu. He thought Subu, uh, you know, had an advantage because he was uh, born in a Brahmin family, right? Subu, Subu was a resourceful, a resourceful man whose loyalty made him nothing but what? Uh, stand out. So made him something called as an odd one out. So he was tailor made for films, right? Perfect, uh, perfectly made for films. And it was difficult to imagine filmmaking without him. So we were talking about Subu. He was very welcoming and was also known for his gesture, for his welcoming to the uh, welcoming to the people. Just like many others at the Gemini Studios, so he also did poetry. Right. He worked for the story department, which also consisted of a liar. So it means in that story department, you also find out some of the liars are also present. So it is uh, beautifully presented that people generally called him the opposite of a legal practitioner. Right. Opposite of legal practitioner means what? Like he should not be in a, means a kind of a legal practice. He was a logical and neutral man in the middle of a room full of dream men or dreamers. So that's something called as a logical and neutral man in the middle of the, means whom? Na, full of dreamers. So people who have a kind of a, you know, means a imaginary thought, right? So whereas when Subu was considered as a, means a practical. So Asuk Mitran then describes that what, how Gemini Studios got a chance to 
host a group of international performers, right? So uh, that is also called as a moral rearmament army, right? So group of international performers called moral rearmament army. Though the plots and messages were not that complicated, right? Their sets and uh, costumes so were near to perfection, appropriate, so much so that for many years, right, Tamil plays displayed sunset and sunrise in a way inherited from Jonathan Valley, or uh, sorry, not Jonathan, it's called as Jotham Valley. Then again, uh, you would also say that another guest which name you could find out called as a Stephen Spender, uh, who comes to visit Gemini Studios. People had hardly, you know, heard of that fellow. And they could not even connect with him due to linguistic barriers, right? So obviously, means people have a problem of what, you know, the kind of a language they know, but their pronunciation and the foreigners so their pronunciation differ a lot and also it also create hindrance it also create hindrance to make a kind of a communication with each other it was not until a few years later that asoka mitram saw what saw uh, his name in a book and realized uh, realized that to who he actually watch, right? So, on the basis of that, uh, you would find out that when Asoka Mitran was telling about Stephen Spender, right, uh, who was uh, somehow called as a little known by the people. So, but at the same time, the author was stating that why he was little known to the people because means uh, there was a kind of a linguistic barriers between Stephen Spender with people. And uh, the writer stated that that person was means uh, popular. Why that person is popular and how did the writer know about it? Now, because means... Uh, uh, Asoka Mitran saw he, that person's name in a book and realized who he actually was, right? This is something, uh, nothing but a kind of a, means a small idea about this particular topic. We will go to the details of the text. Give me a second. Yep. So, uh, are you there, Aditi? Yes. Sir. Okay. So wherever you are unable to understand anything, so please do ask me, right? So I'll be definitely trying to help you. So the first one, uh, it is stated about notice these words and expressions in the text, infer their meaning from, uh, from the context. So uh, we will uh, get to know uh, all these phrases, expressions. Um, uh, not an individual manner, but uh, in a usage based. Blue over. So, blue over is nothing but a called as a means uh, phrase, right? Which is the past tense and it is called as a blue over. Not blue over, blue over. So, um, uh, we will, let's go to the discussion of complete idea and then after we will go for the discussion. Uh, 
to get the meaning of these words. Okay, what does it say? Pancake was the brand name of the makeup material that Gemini Studios bought in truckloads. Greta Garbo must have used it. Miss Gohar must have used it. Bajinti Mala must also have used it. But Rati Agnihotri may not have even heard of it. The makeup department of the Gemini Studios was in the upstairs of a building that was believed to have been Robert Clive's stables. A dozen, you can say that a dozen other buildings in the city are said to have been his residence. For his brief life and an even briefer stay in Madras, Robert Clive seems to have done a lot of moving besides fighting some impossible battles in remote corners of India and marrying a maiden in St. Mary Church in Fort uh, St. George in Madras. Now, if you look into that, what do we find out? We find out that the writer stated about the pancake, right? So, and he was telling that the word pancake from the title, Poets and Pancakes is the name of a makeup brand, right? So it is stated, you no know, pancake was the brand name of the makeup material that Gemini Studio bought in truckloads. So that is what it is stated. The word pancakes from the title, uh, Poets and Pancakes is the name of a makeup brand that Gemini Studio used in large amounts. So it is also stated, uh, it is a very popular brand used by famous celebrities. Uh, like you find out uh, the name is called as uh, Miss Gohor, right? Uh, Greta Garbo and Bajinti Mala. So if you talk about means Miss Gohor, is nothing but a famous celebrity. And if you talk about Greta Garbo, so she is also a Swadeshi actress. And you can say that in 1954, she received as honorary Oscar for her unforgettable screen performance. Right. So, and was the most beautiful woman so who ever lived. She was uh, considering as a, one of the beautiful actresses of the country, right? The second one is called as Bajanti Mala. So who doesn't know Bajanti Mala? So Bajanti Mala also an uh, actress, but an Indian actress whose performance was, you know, widely appreciated um, in different, different movies or called as Bimal Roy's Devdas. So uh, that's what you will find out. So here uh, the author, the author pointed about Miss Gohor, Greta Garbo, and Bajanti Mala, and stating that what now how they use this popular brand. The writer also says that another actress named called as Rati Agnihotri, right? So uh, she pointed about what means. Uh, she pointed that she may not have even means uh, heard of the brand of makeup as she entered the industry latter and probably the brand was no longer in the huge. The brand means I'm talking about pancake. So the lesson begins with a what a brief description about the makeup room of Gemini Studios, which was just situated where? Now on a higher level floor of the building. So the place was earlier believed to be what? Now Robert Clive's stables. So the Gemini studio was considered as the man's earlier place of Robert Clive's stables. Right. So that is what you would find out. Then after it is also said that uh, the author stated Robert Clive was the English soldier. Who was Robert Clive? Robert Clive was the English soldier and the statesman who expanded British power in India and many other buildings in the city are identified as the place of his residence, which is 
witness or evident of the fact that he moved frequently and he is believed to have fought some impossible battle battles in the remote uh, corner of India or remote areas of India. So it is also stated in the statement that he married a young woman whose name is called as a Saint Marriage Church in Fort. Saint Church in Madras. Right. So he married a young woman whose name is called as a means, uh, um, Saint, uh, uh, where did she, uh, he got, uh, he, where did he get into the marriage? It's called as a Saint Marriage Church in Fort Saint George in Madras. So there he got into the marriage to a young woman. Right. So after that, it is also stated the makeup room had the look of a hair cutting, right? So, uh, hair cutting saloon with the lights at all angles, around half a dozen large mirrors. They were all incandescent light, incandescent light. So when you say that incandescent, it means called as a, uh, the light that existed or that produces as a result of being heated. Right. So you would find out emitting that producing uh, light as a result of being heated or called as burning. So here also it is stated they were all incandescent lights. So you can imagine the fury. Fury means terrible misery of those subjected to makeup. So in such a situation in the makeup room where the heat of the light that creates some kind of a means hot right um, and uh, uh, make the people sweating the makeup department was you can say that first headed by a bengali who became too big for a studio and left right so uh, he was a bengali and who became too big for a studio and left he was succeeded by a maharashtrian who was you know supported by means you can say Dharwar Kandiga, Dharwar Kandiga and Andhra, right? Andhra means uh, he's a, uh, you can say that Telugu, right? A Madras Indian Christian and anglo Burmese and the usual local Tamils. All this shows that there was a great deal of national unity or integration long before uh, all India Radio and Doordarshan begin broadcasting programs on national integration. So, the uh, writer also stated that what? Uh, the makeup room looked just like a saloon with around six to seven large mirrors surrounded by men's uh, large bulbs, right? And all around them, the bright light that produces a lot of heat and that were a source of what the discomfort to the actors and actress for those who were, who were getting their makeup done. At first, means the author stated that a Bengali was the head of the makeup studio, but then uh, you would find out uh, he outgrew or he was considered big for the Gemini studios and he left it for better opportunities. After him, it was supervised by the Maharashtrian and uh, uh, Anandra. Uh, you can talk about a Madras Indian Christian, then Anglo Burmese, and the usual local Tamils. So these are the uh, different different people who headed to that particular uh, Gemini studio. So the author also said that the fact that people from different cultures and religions so worked together puts forward the post-independence national integration scenario. National integration means called as a national unity. It shows that people were united way before means All India Radio and Durdarshan raised the concept. So you, you know that what means after independence or called as a post-independence, we have air and Durdarshan, the message spread to the country about the unity. But the author stated that means before air and Durdarshan, so people have 
people had a kind of a thought of what uh, thought of unity uh, unity uh, unity thought means that the people belong to different different cultures and religions they they were unit, united the author also said that the gang of nationality right so the gang of nationality integrated makeup men could turn by decent looking person into a hideous crimson hood monster with the help of truckloads of pancake and a number of other locally made potions and lotions there were the days of mainly indoor shooting and only 5% of the film was shot outdoors the author stated i suppose the sets and studio lights needed the girls and boys to be made to look ugly in order to look presentable in the movie like like i said means the author is pointed what did the author point the author pointed this gang of nationality right so the author mentions that what this team of nationally unified man had the ability of what ability to turn any simple looking individual into an ugly creature right so which we discuss here so uh, in in our summary so the author mentions that this team of nationally unified uh, men had the ability to turn any any simple looking individual into an ugly creature using means all together a lot of pancake products customized lotions right customized lotions means what that's something called as a, uh, <clears throat> using variety of lotions and potions in potions means what whatever the amount they use cannot be describable in those days near about 5% movies were shot outdoors outdoors means called as outsides and rest of them were shot indoors therefore indoor shooting setup and lights required the actors to wear loads of what makeup in order to look presentable means beautiful or called as a appeared nice in front of the camera even if it made them look ugly in real life right that is what it stated the author also stated months after that a street hierarchy was maintained in the makeup department so the cheap makeup man right so made the cheap actors and actress ugly the senior assistant the second hero and heroine the junior assistant the main comedian and so forth like you know that in a movie you would find out uh different different characters are there actors actress like cheap actor cheap actress so uh, uh, uh you can also say that to junior actors junior actress and uh, um you would also find out that uh, um, uh, uh, comedians villains all such kind of people are playing role in a movie right and for them means uh, there are also means a makeup man cheap makeup man assistant uh, senior assistant so different different kind of a people were there so the cheap makeup man made the cheap actors and actress ugly so his senior assistant the second hero and second heroine if multiple stars are playing role in a movie the junior assistant uh, means make the ugly to the main comedian and so forth the players who played the crowd uh, were the responsibility of the office boy even the makeup department of the gemini studio had an office boy on the days when there was a crowd shooting you could see what you could see him mixing his paint in a giant vessel mixing his paint in a giant giant means called as a big vessel and slapping it on the crowd players right the idea was to what na close every pore on the surface of the face in the process of applying makeup so makeup was put on each and every actors actress each actor and actress as well as uh, uh, side heroes side heroines comedians villains so even 
crowd of boys. So if, if you say that the author stated that he was not exactly a boy, he was in his early 40s. Having entered the studios years ago in the hope of becoming a star actor or a top screenwriter, a director or lyrics writer, he was a bit of a poet. Now the author was describing himself like he was um, kind of a different man. Uh, he went to the Gemini studio for the purpose of uh, for the purpose of what? For the purpose of different dream, right? Like the author stated about what? The author stated that he wanted to become a screenwriter or called as a um, <clears throat> um, um, director or called as a lyrics, right? So, but uh, and he was a big poet also. That's what he pointed. So in those days, you would find out, means the author mentioned here, in those days, I worked in a cubicle, right? When we say that a cubicle, the meaning of cubicle is called as a small partition of area of a room, right? So that is what is called as a cubicle, right? So here he pointed that in those days I worked in a cubicle, means in a very small part, means uh, what do you say that? Uh, it is stated in a partition of area of a room. So one room is there and that room is also partitioned and made a small room where means who uh, the writer was working or the right, uh, writer means stayed and also doing some kind of a work. The author stated that the room was partitioned to whole sides of which were French windows. So the author stated, I did not know at that time they were called French windows, right? So Seeing me sitting at my desk, tearing up newspapers day in and day out, most people thought I was doing next to nothing. So the author was telling that what he was doing in that cubicle or in that partition room. So he was cutting uh, all this uh, tearing or cutting the newspaper. So, and it is possibly that the boss thought likewise too. Boss thought likewise too means his boss was also thinking that means uh, Mr. Asoka Mitram was doing not any important job. So anyone who felt I should be given some occupation would barge into my cubicle and deliver an extended lecture, right? So the boy in the makeup department had decided I should be uh, enlightened or made happy on how great literary talent was being allowed to go, go west in a department fit only for barbers and perverts. Soon I was praying for crowd shooting all the time. Nothing short of it could save me from his epics. Now you can see that the author began the idea uh, by introducing Gemini Studio and stated about the different, different people, right? The author also stated about the hierarchy system the author stated like just like any uh, large organization, the makeup studio means followed a hierarchy. Hierarchy is called as a gradation where the chief makeup man made the uh, made the lead actors and actress uh, looking ugly. So he's a senior assistants, the second hero and second heroine. So the junior assistants, the main comedian and the office boy held in making the remaining crowd looked uh, ugly at times of crowd shooting, right? So their whole idea was to cover each and every blemish on a face for it to look good on the screen. The fact that the makeup studio had its own office boy in, uh, so who is nothing but uh, important enough to highlight the size of Gemini Studios. The office boy at the Gemini Studios was not a boy, but a man, you can say that in his early 40s, who did poetry and like million others. So he joined the studios with a dream of becoming an actor or a screenwriter. But what happened? Means he left with nothing but cutting the newspaper. Uh, the author also stated that 
means the duty of him in Gemini studio was to nothing but cut out newspaper clippings on a wide variety of means subjects. So, um, and store them in files. Many of these had to be written out by hand and he was given a small area in a room with the French windows, which he didn't know also, right? Uh, considering the nature of his job, most of most people thought his job was insignificant. Insignificant means something which is nothing but called as a, uh, no importance is present, right? Okay. Are you listening to me, Aditi? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, ask. What is the meaning of cubicle? Cubicle is called as a room which was, you know, partitioned. Do you understand that a cubicle what? Yes. So, a small partition of area of a room, like, for example, you can say one containing a shower or toilet or a desk in an office, right? So, there is an office. But uh, you also keep a one portion of it, which is nothing but used for the purpose of showering or called as a toilet or a desk. That is what called as a cubicle. Am I clear? Yes. And uh, meaning of perverts. Sorry, what is that? Perverts. Perverts. So pervert is a, you know, some kind of a... Uh, uh, you can say that a kind of a, a negative language or you can also say that a kind of a, a we usually say that somebody who is an idiot or called as a, somebody who is uh, not having a, a good a good idea right so means or called as a person it's a negative a person whose sexual behavior is considered abnormal and unacceptable that's what it's called as a perverts even you also find out the word called as a man's uh, um, epic wind uh, um, sorry french window so french window is known as a uh, glazed doors in an outside wall so you also find out bargin b-a-r-g bargin it means called as a to walk in uh, to walk into a room quickly without being invited, right? So, yeah. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. So, the duty of Asokabitram, we understood that. And next is called as in all instances of frustration, right? Uh, the author stated you will always find the anger directed towards a single person, openly or covertly, right? And this man of the makeup department was convinced that all his ooze, ignominy, and neglect were due to Kothamangalam Subhu, right? So now you would find out some of the words are given ooze, ignominy, and neglect. So ignominious is called as a disgrace. Oz means called as a uh, kind of a, you know, distress. So the author stated in all instances of frustration, you always find the anger directed towards a what? A single person, openly or secretly. And this man of the makeup department was convinced that, sorry, convinced that all his distress, Oz, Oz means distress, Right, or called as a, some kind of a stress, ignominy, that called as a shame, and also neglect were due to uh, one of the person called as a Subhu. Subhu was the number two at Gemini Studios. He could not have had a more encouraging opening in films than our grown up makeup boy had. On the contrary, or on the opposite, he must have, means who? Uh, Subhu must have had to face more unsure, uncertain and difficult times for when he began his career. There were no firmly established, uh, established film producing companies or studios, even in the matter of education. 
especially formal education, Subhu could not have had an, uh, you can say that appreciable lead over our boy, right? Could not have or uh, possibly have not, possibly not have had an appreciable lead over our boy. But by virtue of being, or but by virtue means that called as a behavior, showing that called as a moral standard of being born a Brahmin, a virtue. Indeed, he must have had exposure to more affluent situations. Affluent situation, that something called as a wealthy situations and people. So, or you can say that uh, wealthy, uh, wealthy people, like, or that called as a Subhu had a kind of a means mixing with the wealthy people. He had the ability to look happy at all times, even after having had a hand in a flop film. So even if uh, having had a hand in a flop film means to be involved with some of the movies which were nothing but fluff in the manner. Right. So the author stated that he always had when we are talking about Subhu, so the author stated that he always had work for somebody. He could never do things, right, uh, on his own. But his sense of loyalty, but his sense of loyalty, Subhu's sense of loyalty, made him identify himself with his principal or called his main completely and turn his entire creativity to his principal's advantage. He was tailor-made for films. So, here was a man who could be inspired when commanded. The rat fights the tigress underwater and kills her, but takes pity on the cubs and tends them lovingly. I don't know how to do the scenes. The producer would say and Subhu would come out with four ways of the rat Four ways of the rat pouring affection on its victim's offering, offspring. Good, but I am not sure it is effective in, uh, enough. The producer would said, uh, say and in a minute, Subhu would come out with 14 more alternative, 14 more means different things. Now, what does it actually say that? Now, the author stated, he always had uh, work for somebody. As you know that Subhu was a very resourceful man who always had some sort of work for everyone. He was bad at doing things on his own, but his huge loyalty means made him a man of, uh, you can say that important, right? So he was well known for his creativity. So, and everybody thought that he was a perfect in the profession of filmmaking, one had to only tell him a situation. If you tell him a situation, he would come with many different ways to perform in it. Like one of the example which was stated, uh, he, uh, when you say that teller made no, perfect. Here uh, was a man who could be inspired when commanded, the rat fights the tigress, un tigress underwater and kills the tigress, but takes pity on the cubs and tends them lovingly. Now, what do you find out in this? Means when the director asked him to execute a scene in which a rat kills a tigress, right? Now, in that movie, you have to make a kind of a scene. In that scene, uh, means you find out a rat kills a tigress underwater, but takes care of the cubs out of sympathy. Subhu came with the four or rather 14 different ways to perform it and he took less than a minute to work it out. So you would find out that uh, the author also uh, stated next. Filmmaking must have been and was so easy with a man like Subhu, right? Around, uh, Subhu, around. And if ever there was a man who gave direction and definition to Gemini Studios during its golden years. It was none other than Subhu. Who, means who gave the direction and definition to Gemini Studios means gave the importance. Right. 
So Subhu had a separate identity as a poet and therefore, although he was uh, surely capable of more difficult and higher performance, he deliberately chose to address his poetry to the masses, right? So his success in films overshadowed and dwarf. So when you talk about that overshadow, it's called as a means his success in film is something like a was better than and dwarfed means uh, uh, insignificant in comparison. So something which is called as a very, very uh, not that important in compared to others, right? So and dwarfed his literary achievements. So uh, his critics felt uh, it's not, uh, not the author, but the critics who comment on his film, right? He composed several truly original story poems in folk refrain and diction, right? When you say that frock uh, refrain, folk means called as a, it refers to the people. Refrain is refers that called as a repeated in poetry, right? So uh, you can say that truly original story poems in means a folk song or folk means in a poetry version and diction that's something called as a means some of the poetry also singing or articulated and also wrote a sprawling novel so when you say that sprawling it's called as a spreading over a large area detailed detailed novel thilana moham uh, there is a one of the means uh, novel you would find out Thilana Moh Mohanambal, right? Thilana, Thilana Mohanambal means so with the dozens of very deftly aged characters. He quite successfully recreated the mood and manner of the Devadasis of the early 20th century. So when you say that Devadasis, so in South India, a Devadasi is a girl dedicated her life uh, uh, to worship and serve the temple for the rest of her life. And the system was outlawed in all of India in 1988. So that is what you will find out. Um, it gives us the idea that since Subhu was extremely resourceful and creative person, filmmaking was a lot of easier, lot easier when he was around. So he alone gave nothing but G Gemini Studios a unique identity. Not only this, he was also great at poetry. He had the privilege of getting his poetry extraordinary right, identity. But he still chose to what? Uh, remember this poetry or uh, remember the poetry personally to the masses. Right? His critics were of the opinion that his poetic skills were what means excessive good uh, by his uh, filmmaking ex skills. He composed variety of uh, story poems and uh, 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 famous novel uh, called as uh, Thilana Mohan, uh, what is that? Thilana Mohanambal with the beautifully curated characters. He even recreated the mood and manner of the Dasis who existed in the 20th century. And we know about the Devdasis, who are they? So the author stated that he was an amazing actor. Who was an amazing actor? Means uh, this Subhu, right? He never aspired to the lead roles, means he never wanted to play the lead roles. But whatever subsidiary role he played in any of the films, he performed better than the supposed main players. So the author stated that he had a genuine love for anyone he came across and his house was a permanent residence for dozens of what? Dozens of near and uh, near and dear, you can say that, near and far relations and unknown people or means some acquaintances like who are, whom he knows not frequently. Uh, so it seems against Subhu's nature to be even conscious that he was feeding and supporting so many of them. 
such a charitable means uh, he as you know that he was wealthy so that's why what he did actually he uh, he was feeding and supporting many such a charitable or kind uh, means kindness and uh, uh, you can say that improvident man and but uh, he had enemies also why now was it because he seemed so close and intimate with the bus or was it his general demeanor when you say that demeanor means called as a degrading attitude right or called as a going down to that attitude that resembled a psychophants psychophants means now you find out that subu was the uh, subu has the habit of what means of flattering right was this uh, was this the re reason for which he was the he was means made many enemies or his readiness to say nice things about everything in any case there was this man in the makeup department who would wish uh, means uh, there was this man in the makeup department who would wish the direct things for subu right now you are talking about whom there's something called as a author asoka mitran so there was asoka mitran in the makeup department who would wish to the direct thing for subu direct means that something called as a uh, terrible terrible things for subu so it gives us the idea that apart from the means given qualities so subu was a realistic actor so not very uh, you can say that uh, fond of playing the protagonist or main character whichever role he performed he had the ability to perform better than means any other he treated everyone with a sincere respect and affectionate so much so that his home was a permanent place for all his knowns he was not even aware of the fact that he was creating many uh enemies because of his flattering attitude right so he was not sure about the reason behind such behavior towards subu so he guessed to be his closeness with the boss so because he's the author stated here that subu said nice things about everything and everyone or simply because he praised the boss flattered the boss to gain support regardless the boy in the makeup department so despite that also you will find out the boy in the makeup department wished terrible things for subu right uh, i 